Like, so I watched fucking First Men in the Moon. It's a bit of a shit title, first of all. I mean, yeah. no one cares about who was the first man in the moon. Like, anyone, only people care about who's the first man on the moon. You know, people aren't going to be like, uh, you know, Buzz Aldrin was the first man, like, in the moon, but Neil was the first on, so, you know. It's kind yeah, of a, it is a dig. I don't really get the title. But also, <laughs> okay, let's, let's get into the film. It starts off, and this is actually probably the funniest part of the film. There's a UN spaceship. Okay. Imagine that the UN, the UN of all of all groups, is able to get itself with an international crew to the moon. <laughs> they could even swim out in the U- in the nineties, and yet they had an international <laughs> cosmonaut astronaut spaceship in the sixties. Where the fuck was the logic there? <laughs> Though, like, if anyone can do it, it's the UN, and then they find it. It's probably not the UN. You know what it was? It was was clearly a British film, and they were like, ah, if it was an American film, they would be like, we went to the moon, we did it ourselves. But it's the British, and they're like, our citizens fucking (laughs) wouldn't be able to manage that shit. So, European Union? Eh. I mean, Spain's fascist, and Germany's split in two. Let's just fucking go UN with them. And then you can have some Japanese and shit. And it kind of balances it out. Because if you've got a Japanese person, they'll be like, it's technological as fuck. (laughs) Isn't it? (laughs) Yeah, I mean... Especially in the 60s. They they were like... They were like, he's he's Asian. He must must have, like... He must know everything. Yeah, must have a a nice um, um, FM radio in there. (laughs) 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 Anyway, they're fucking, they're okay. in the spaceship, right? And, yeah. like, a bit disconnect. It starts to land on the moon. And they open up the hatch. And a man goes in, and they quarantine it. And he grabs onto this, like, a bar. And it's got, got, like, a rope in the middle. And they lower him down on this rope, so he's just hanging. <laughs> and, okay, I was okay. about this. At the time, I was laughing because he's just being hung from a rope like that, but no, slowly being lowered. I was just thinking, would it have been great if they had a ladder? Because it made me think. I was made out of rope. Yeah, that if they made it out of metal, that'd be heavy. <laughs> but if they just used the exact same material to make a ladder instead of a rope, whoa! Suddenly, it's like it's really easy to use things because you have to be lowered up and down from that thing. If you've no. got a ladder, you're just like. Use a ladder. What the fuck? There's no extra training for a ladder. Because yeah, if if you slip and if you slip and fall off of this rope, yeah, like you got nothing else to hold on to. You're like you're like free falling man. You'd be the first one even free falling. You'd be on the moon. <laughs> first <laughs> bruise on the moon. <laughs> but I um, I actually wonder now. Imagine like what the worst injury has that's been had on the moon. Because you've seen, like, the videos of them, like, falling over and they kind of, like, jump around. Like, what if, like, one, like, he, like, put his, uh, stubbed his uh, toe on a moon rock and, and that's the the biggest injury in space? I don't think you could stub your toe on a moon rock because you're not moving with enough force to be able to cause pain to yourself like that. Oh, that's what you think, mate. I mean, you could still, like, like chip a bit of toenail off or something to get a bit of a bruise, you know? The only thing that would happen is if something heavier than you was falling onto you and you just decided not to move out of the way and be stupid about it. And you're like, I'm just going to lie here and let this random rock be thrown on me and just drop like on me. Like in Star Trek. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's not fucking I think <laughs> someone has had a stupid injury on the moon, though. It'd be quite funny. It wouldn't suppose if there's a stupid injury. It wouldn't suppose there's some kind of stupid injury. Now that like, I think about it, it's definitely something really mild, like someone went for a Someone drink tripped and, and fell out on their own shears <laughs> on the moon. <laughs> That's lethal, mate. People die from that every day in small villages in England. <laughs> mate, it's only a little bit of red. Right, so the cosmonaut and the <laughs> British bloke and I think the American bloke 
are walking around and they see something on top of a rock and they're like, yeah, what the fuck is that? And they pick it up and it's the um, the Union Jack. <gasps> like a little, like um, a small Union Jack flag, like like palm sized. And it's like stabbed into like a little, like official seal, like envelope. And they open it and it says like, I hereby declare this a, a colony of Queen Victoria sign, whatever the fuck his name is. The year 18 something something. You know, like peak 18, like Victorian era. And they're like, yeah, yeah this might be from the past lads. And they're, the British bloke, he says, well, I didn't put it there. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a great line. I swear to God. Because if a British bloke was in that position, it's exactly what they would say. It wasn't me, mate. <laughs> yeah, don't blame me. Yeah. <laughs> I followed you. I had I nothing say. to do with this. <laughs> I'll call the Queen. She might know. She'll have to look through Mum's diaries. <laughs> So they fucking they they send pictures of it. They they Snapchat it to the, they put in the WhatsApp group, mate. Right? Yeah, to to Euston, <laughs> and Euston's like, lol, ruffle, gonna send this over to the UK. Hold on, and um, they basically go up to this random office. I think that runs like rent or something. I don't know. It's like a okay. bank. I don't put it's like a bank with like papers and shit in and like computers really weird so <laughs> they go up and this this bloke and they're like do you know the name of this bloke did he live here and he's like i'll have a look mate but <laughs> really shave this mate it's gonna take a while and they're like oh shit what about this girl and he's like oh yeah yeah someone married her yeah he, i think he married her sick and he's like yeah they rented that cottage or something so they yeah. go to the cottage and they, they find out who li- who else lives in the cottage and it turns out to be another bloke. I fucking don't know. I was kind of zoning out. Too many names came up. <laughs> <laughs> and um, this guy's name is Bedford. Something Bedford. Because it's the okay. 60s. <clears throat> he's like on by their surname. Right? They're like, oh, fucking Bedford, mate. Uh, do you know anything about this shit? And he's in an old age home. And he's like, yeah, I fucking holy shit, mate. I s- this is a, this was on the moon, and they were like, "Yeah, we we know we just bought it from there." And he's like, "You fucking what? You went there?" <laughs> and and they're like, y- "Yeah, l- like it's nineteen sixty six. Of course we went to the moon." And he's like, "Fuck me, uh, don't go there. You'll all die." And now they're like, "Oh, what a lunatic!" But then again, he is holding. A moon flag in his hands from the eighteen hundreds, okay. and I swear to God, the look of this guy—he's like fifty, but they painted him like silver, and uh, he's like <laughs> they want him to look like he's stressed, so he's like sweating, and you can see like the lines of yeah. his sweat, like like uh, collecting with silver okay. paint going down his face. Oh no! Oh, yeah. No. And obviously they have like the big lights in there and the booms and shit, so it's just like slightly melting and what it just looks awful. It looks like Donald <laughs> Trump's face, but if it if it was orange, it was like silvery white. And I don't know, like old people don't look silver, right? Their hair maybe. Like fucking Paul Hollywood. But Paul Hollywood's yeah. face is pink as fuck, mate. Oh, <laughs> fucking old people look like. Jesus Christ. <laughs> and, okay. <laughs> there's there's loads of reporters in there and the per- the yeah. carer of the old age home is like, Oi, don't don't fuck around with him, he's old, be careful. And um one of the reporters pushes uh, this old lady uh, like out of the way just to like get her away from like Bradford, no Bedford. Yeah, and she Bedford. hits like um like a cupboard like, Oh and then one of the reporters the, the reporter that pushed her is like, Oh shit, that framed really nicely and just takes a picture of her. <laughs> It came across so weird because it's just like, ah, oh, fucking get out of the way. And he looks, he's like, that looks like a nice picture opportunity. It's, it's a little nice Kodak pic. It's a bit random, <laughs> but it's a weird okay. Story. I don't know why that happened. Anyway, they fucking, they're like, here, tell me your, 
your story your story is probably quite cool and he's like i can't even believe i thought it's cool right and like yeah 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 hold on hold on just tell us like uh real real quick please uh what the fuck <laughs> he's like yeah yeah sure sure and he's like started in this fucking cottage and like yeah there we go we're getting somewhere and now it like it pans to like a different era back to the 1800s so it's like the, the book of this film it was written by the same bloke who did like war of the worlds and shit and like the time machine okay and so he wrote it in like the victorian age and so it's set it's it's kind of the story set in its own time it's being redone for film like 50 60 yeah. years later and now i'm talking about it 50 or 60 years later so it's just like 100 year story 100 year window of me a nice little year, big window of yeah, me and um so <laughs> it's kind of funny because because in my eyes it's it's i'm laughing at the film who's laughing at the book and it's like I'm laughing at what they thought technology would be, and what they thought the UN would be, and they're laughing at what they thought like spaceships and the moon would be like in the Victorian age. Yeah. And it's like, do you think you're laughing? Fuck no, you got nothing on me. I'm gonna laugh way more. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm gonna laugh at both of you, and not just the book. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> why did I think the UN of all places? Like, I don't know. It's fucking. I think it was post-war, and they were like. Ah, oh, we we beat the Germans back. We will come together and we will build rockets and we will go to the moon. Yeah, the rockets they and... built didn't go to the moon. They went to like Korea or Cuba. <laughs> 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 well, they almost got to Cuba, actually. Wasn't it? Wasn't it the whole thing? I don't remember. It's something about Kennedy. Well, he's dead now. So it's Maybe, dead. yeah. It might have been. Yeah. It sounds familiar. What Kennedy died, yeah, fucking hell. No, not that, but the whole that. They showed it in, in Umbrella Academy. <laughs> yeah, mate. You know, like, I can't believe people try to actually prevent that, you know? Yeah. You knew beforehand, and. Like, who could have known? Who could have known, mate? Anyway, the fucking. You're in the cottage, and. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this bloke's like, um, he's like, at his typewriter, he's like, written like one sentence in it. Like, uh, act one, scene one, nothing, and he's got like half a glass, half a fairly big glass of whiskey, and he's been sipping away at it for a while. And uh, the postman comes with his paper on a bike. It's crazy. He has like little cars that come around, and blokes with bins, <laughs> <laughs> like little car bins. <laughs> and um, they, yeah, they hand delivered like newspapers to people. <laughs> What the hey, fuck? what is this? Holy shit. No one hand delivers, even people just like sh- chuck it in there, mate. I haven't been awake for the post in years. Years, mate. <laughs> <laughs> even to even today myself, like um <laughs> I stepped out of the house for a bit for a walk. And I was gone for like twenty minutes while we being bagged and I was like, there's parcels in the drive in the, the gate, the alleyway, and I'm like the alleyway. No one knocked when I was here. <laughs> That's just what they do. They never, they never just... come when you want them to be. Mm. Right. So, so the fucking, <laughs> that he's driving. He's cycling back down the canal, and there's a car coming, like a woman in a dress. Like they wore like huge dresses constantly. It's weird shit. And then and, this um, is the eighteen hundreds. It makes like sense. I stress. He's like driving the centre of the road, but he's a car. And he's on a bike, you know, it's narrow as fuck thing. And he drives around her, he and then he says, "I'm turning on the scene," and it's like, hey, "What the fuck, mate? Just go around." Like, I mean, you did, but who gives a shit? Like, cycling in London is like way harder. Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> You're complaining that you had to move out of your way. Like, what's the? You could have got off if you were scared. Anyway, the fucking car comes, yeah. doesn't even lock it, doesn't go beep beep, and go <laughs> no, he just fucking gets out the car, anyone could have taken it, uh, doesn't even take the crank out, you know, you're meant to take it out so you can't start the engine, yeah. goes in, and, and he's like, 
uh, yo, um, we're going to get married, right? And she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, she's American. And um, she's like, just one thing, like, uh, I'm poor as fuck, but it's not because I'm poor. It's because everything, all my money is in assets, yeah? <laughs> and she's like, oh, cool, 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 cool. And he's like, good, good. But also, could you just sign this paper for no reason? Um, and she's like, yeah, yeah, definitely. I'll sign this paper without you telling me what it, what it is. And fucking, he's like, cool, cool, cool. Um, we don't have any money to get married, by the way. And he's like, by the way, I'm just going to leave now. <laughs> it's all done very theatrically. Uh, and then okay. so someone's driving up, I know, cycling up. And then as the woman is watering the flowers, I think her name is Katie. Yeah, I fucking remember the name. Katie <laughs> is, is is watering the flowers. Some old lunatic on a bike cycles past and like sees her and like, whoa, and he's like really ditzy and gets off and he's like, but oh, I kind of like, you know what people in the 60s thought nerds were like? They thought they were like, they didn't know how to like stand up straight and like, didn't know how to walk. Hunch back with a big backpack and the uh, yeah, and, like, glasses and all that. Their gaze constantly and like, they saw a woman they were like they were like i've got to be normal to them but i can't not be not normal you know like all this yeah. weird shit like second guessing yourself anyway he comes off as a right perv <laughs> <laughs> oh hi how you doing <laughs> no he just like lingers without saying anything and he just behaves like it's normal which says a lot about the 60s and possibly the 1800s i don't know what it was like back then uh but um Oh mate, I remember like, it like it was yesterday, mate. Yeah, mate, you're I fucking. Like how old would you be? Like twenty two? Oh, mate, you've been around the block, mate. You remember yeah, that. I've been around back when the UN. Mate, I remember uh, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when the UN worked together to achieve greatness. Yeah. I remember when they first settled on Mars, mate. Yeah. Now they don't want to go back there, like they forgot all about it. Yeah, what's this, the point? This, yeah. This Elon Musk folks just like, we need to go to Mars and we need to settle them. Like, he's, gonna, he's just going to claim you want to Mars for South Africa. That's what's going to happen. And then he's going to bury a Thai kid in there. He's going to bury a Thai kid under Mars and then call someone a pedo. <laughs> 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 That's a. I don't know if people remember that enough to even understand what I just said. Hmm. But he's not a nice man. <laughs> <laughs> so fucking, fucking, um, he's like, by the way, mate, fucking, I'm a scientist. I do a lot of explosive shit. No, I do a lot of explosive stuff, not explosive shit, yeah. um, in my house or down there, which is where I live. I'll buy this house from you because I don't want you blowing up accidentally. And she's like, that's really good because I need money for the wedding and my bloke definitely, definitely, definitely owns this house and isn't renting. And um, she's like, oh, that's weird that you said it like that, but cool, cool. I'm like, all right, cool. And he just, um, I think he, he hears a noise and then runs to his house and leaves his bicycle. So he's obviously a ditzy and a crazy man. So <laughs> leaving bicycles behind, what a yeah, yeah. trait. And now Bradford, Bedford comes back and he's like, yo, uh, hubby. My my bloke, wonderful news. I've sold the house, and he's like, "You fucking what, mate?" Uh, still, definitely own the house. <laughs> definitely not renting. But uh, I'll see. I'll have a chat with him about yeah. it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna gonna parry off him and use talking about it as an excuse to just fuck off. So he he takes he drives his bike thirty <laughs> meters away from his house. Like, I swear to you, he drives there. He he puts so much effort into putting the bike in the car, because you know that boot or anything, car boot. And then gets in, drives 30 yeah. metres, and then just walks the bike to his door. Like, what? You could have cycled his bike there, or walked it there. Anyway, <laughs> he speaks to some random bloke, and he's like, yeah. yo, mate, um, not going to sell this house for you, I don't own it. And the bloke's like, I'm not the bloke of this house, you're not the scientist. So he goes and sees some people fucking around with a furnace, like, like, kind of like, uh, 
top the attack kind of blokes from Victorian times, right? Blacksmiths and shit. And then he yeah. then he sees the signpost and he's like, yeah. hey, let me chat with you. And they go into the kitchen and he's like, I'll fucking put my foot down. And he like looks around, he's like, there's weird shit's going on. He's like, yeah, hold on, what are you, what are you seeing this shit like? Unobtainium and Wakanda Forever Obtinium. What is this shit? And um <laughs> And he's like, uh, this is like this metal shit. Um, when it when it solidifies, it basically turns gravity off. And he's like, yeah, yeah, very yeah, cool, cool, cool. Yo, what the fuck? And he's like, that's definitely not true. And I want you to prove it in the most unsafe way possible, please. And so what he does, the scientist, the scientist paints the bottom of the chair. And he's like, it's very strong, so be careful. And he's like, Oh, if it's so strong, I could probably sit on it. And he's like, oh, it's quite a bit stronger than that. And so he sits on it, and it goes up, and he's stuck on the ceiling. And I swear to you, he falls out of the chair, lands on a table of unlabeled fluids, uh, <laughs> one of which is a molten metal. But if it gets on you, you will fly off out of the atmosphere. And he he grazes the the anti gravity. Molten metal. Yeah. And I'm just like, Jesus Christ, your life would have been awful. Mm. It would have burnt your limb off. It would have burnt your fucking bits of your body off. <laughs> and then they would have gone away into the ether. <laughs> you would have been able to sew it back on. <laughs> in, in the stars now. And he's like, This is really great. Um mm. you know what? You can have my house for free. If I get the right if I get some of the rights to this shit, and so he just sold his his house that he doesn't own for a metal that is weird as fuck, but probably quite cool yeah. right, if it existed. I mean, the whole science is completely whack. He 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 tells of it as it's like putting your curtains down and shutting off the the light of the sun. So if you put the curtains down, and they had this. This paint on it, it would shut off the gravity. <laughs> Weird. Yeah, I mean, Weird. at least sissy physics was more than enough to tell me that absolute shite. <laughs> <laughs> absolute shite. A primary school, man. Primary, primary school, school physics. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm not even gonna judge. It was like the bloke was clever for his time. But stupid by nowadays, you know. By any circumstance. Although to be fair, he was a shit writer. <laughs> <laughs> what does this do? Um, this and um, just um, it just turns off gravity. You know, just like. No, I've read his book. I've read Next some of his book. books. When he explains a very basic thing, he will explain it for like five chapters, like hundred pages, just for one thing shit. The Time Machine, I fucking swear, is unreadable because he spends more than 50 pages of a thick book talking about how it's possible to travel through time as if someone had never thought about the possibility of time traveling to the future. Like, so this guy just basically made convoluted theories that actually made no sense. Yeah, that's well, yeah. uh, He's a, a shit writer, let's be real. But anyway... <laughs> The fucking he goes back to fucking Polly or whatever, and he's like, "I've sold the house for no money," and she's like, "Hold on, hold on, hold on. You've sold the house for no money. The point of selling the house is to get married." And he's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, I know, but didn't I tell you I invested my money in military surplus on the Boer War? So um, <laughs> that money exists. It's just not." In my pocket. And she's like, yo, I'm finna divorce your bitch ass as soon as we get married. <laughs> <laughs> Why even get to the first point of getting married in the first place? I know. I, know. <laughs> I made it up. She, she threatens to leave him later, not yet. I just kind of yeah. thought it'd be funny to say that. Sorry, I've, I've ruined the plot. You're never going to be able to watch the film now because of that. I don't think I can watch the film of after turning off the gravity. <laughs> just a flick of the switch and just like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> it's it's pretty much like that in terms of the gravity of the switch. Because now now he gets introduced to the spaceship, which is in a greenhouse. And guess guess what else is in the greenhouse? A pet a fucking small group of geese. He's got guard geese. Yeah, mate. And he's given them names like Dorothy and uh, Vic- Victoria. I forget those. And then is there, is there, was there a Bill? Yeah, there's a B- Bill and a Bruce and a. Oh, I think actually Bruce Forsyth was one of the geese. <laughs> he was just sitting there as a fully formed man, just like pecking away at gravel. <laughs> oh Jesus, Lord. Right. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. It's like um, it's like um origami, the the spaceship. It's like a ball, with like um you know at the ends of trains they've got those things to stop, that when it gets tucked in like another train it like, the two connect together and they tie it up. Yeah. It's got those like covered around each angle. You get what I'm saying? I get you, but it's I just like an do not see any practical. Of like squares and triangles, and then on the top there's like like a diving bell hat, so that they unscrew it and they can go in, and they go in. Yeah. And um, oh, I look, I can criticize a spaceship like like that like so fucking quick. This spaceship is fucking disgusting. It looks like a pool <coughs> table, but like imagine if you made it. Like wall ceilings and floor, out of pool table, like that weird green velvety shit. It's like everything's yeah. taken. You're walking a cushion, and everything's green and velvety and ugh, ugh. In a wood in a spaceship is bad, and like, but velvety cushioned walls are just weird. Like so fucking. Definitely weird. drew some inspiration from Barbarella. Maybe. But Barbarella was like, it was kind of like a bachelor pad in Barbarella, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, um, you know Biff's, um, the like Biff head, like... Headhouse Mansion in Back to the Future 2? That was like on the same level as Barbarella's, oh, yeah. like, little bachelorette pad. But this is like weird, and it's, I think it's trying to be like all uppity and like high class, but it's just like ugly as fuck. <laughs> Anyway, he's fucking, he's like, oh, how's it work? And he, like, presses the button, and one of the blinds comes down. Like, on the outside, the next blind, he's like, we're going to paint that. And so when you close the blind, gravity's off. And when you open it, gravity's on. So obviously, if you hide the paint, it doesn't, the gravity doesn't get fucked with. But if the paint's visible, it does. Which is like, what? That doesn't make any sense. Is it like sun plus paint reduces gravity? Like, where's the equation there? Like, is light <laughs> essential for gravity? And if it's Wait, so you these, these, these vents, the paint on the vents, is it on the inside or the outside? No, he's going to put it on the outside. He hasn't no. painted it on yet, though. That nice silence there. He just can't comprehend the idea of uh, like 1880s sci-fi. They just make weird decisions like that. Like, oh, for some reason you need to have anti-gravity visible to do see gravity. Fine. Pull the shutters down. Pull the shutters down, boys. It's time to fly. <laughs> yeah, legit. Yeah. Anyway, the fucking, <laughs> it turns out that the whole time they were they were looking at the spaceship. Uh, the blokes doing the furnace, who were like heating up the, I think it was called like corvite or something. Corvite okay. is the is the anti grav metal. While they're heating it up, okay. they're like, yo, um, we got told that we need to keep this at a solid temperature, but uh, like, let's just go pub, mate, and they just walk away, whilst they're like doing work, like they can just straight up go pub. <laughs> and. And so then you hear an explosion, and the explosion is quite cool because the anti gravity shit exploded, and so when everything exploded, it just went up, and then never came back down. It just kept on going up, 
<laughs> I, I thought that was actually really, really cool. It was quite a nice scene. It's kind of funny. Okay. It looked kind of like a Minecraft explosion or something, but like, everything just goes... <laughs> and then, like, nothing settles, because obviously it's been anti-gravitied. Mm-hmm. So, there you go. It's, now now you've got some bricks and a bit of tinder in the sky. <laughs> Might hit a red balloon. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, okay, let's carry on here. Anyway, um, Katie is like, if she runs out, it's like, an, expo- an explosion, oh my god. And she runs up and, and he's like, uh, actually I don't remember what she calls Bedford. I'm just calling it, they call him Bedford. They're like, oh my dear Bedford, are you okay? And he's like, that explosion, yeah mate, it fucking didn't hurt me, why are you worried? Because you know how they were back in that day, they were like, oh, if I'm not dead, I shouldn't. Give a shit about anything. <laughs> and then she's American and like a girl. So she's like terrified about everything. And yeah. she's like, I really don't really want you doing any of this shit. And he's like, by the way, I didn't tell you <laughs> what any of this shit was. I left it in the dark. So uh, we're actually going to the moon. And she's like, <laughs> no, fam, Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm, this relationship <laughs> has been killed and shot dozens of times over. You're a fucking unemployed, poorly motivated. Uh, you waste money. You go to the moon. Um, you explode things. You're just not a good match for me. Also, she has her own car. I don't think she needs this bloke. Uh, yeah. And she's famous, apparently. So... Um, you know how like um like Stephen King always put himself in his books and shit, and he was so coked up that he never realised he did. Anyway, it was kind of like that. Like H.G. Wells clearly was writing this character as himself, and um, yeah. Why did he write himself as a bitch? <laughs> as as he wrote himself as having this like talented, rich, successful, like, um, I think she's like a, an actress or like a theatre star or something. Mm-hmm. And, and he's like, yeah, I gave, in my, in my book, I gave myself the best girl in the country or, or in America. And, um, but he writes himself as a piece of shit, useless, <laughs> bad writer. Yeah. That's just depressing. Makes sense. Maybe he had depression. He's dead. Maybe. So doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, they're fucking He's like he's like, um, if you fucking go to space, you'll never see me again. And he's like Okay. And now there's a moment of like um Oh, it's all sad and ah. Uh, it's like if you were sad you would probably have put in effort in maintaining a good relationship rather than pissing away everything you had. Like, you really yeah. need this kick up the arse. You need the kick up the arse without the benefit of going to the moon as well. You just need to get fucking broken up with, mate. You need that. <laughs> it's, it's a good thing. <laughs> but what happens is that she's like, um, they're, they're like, he's, they're painting on the metal, so it's like going to set in a few hours and Basically, they're going to the moon soon. So they're packing up everything. And she's like, I brought you some things. And um, she brings, and I kid you not, it looks like a shotgun, like a double barrel shotgun. She calls it a fucking elephant gun. It's like... <laughs> she brings him, and I don't know how they have this weapon. Essentially, the most powerful gun on the planet that isn't a cannon. It's for killing elephants, mate. Yeah. And they're, the elephants are large. They're, they're big things. Yeah. A good couple metres tall, right? And she's like, you might, need this on the moon. you might need an elephant gun on the moon. And I think, you know what? It's such a cracks me up. It's, it's so funny. I don't know if he meant, if he, if he actually was being fully honest here. Or if he said it as a joke. But he said, oh, my dear. There aren't any elephants on the moon. <laughs> oh, 
Jesus. I, I don't know. If he, <laughs> did he get that clue? It's like, oh, there could be aliens. Um, I don't know if he was being serious either. Like, oh, you're a woman. Maybe he, fully, you know, that kind maybe of he fully thought that she meant there will be elephants. Elephants. Oh, I don't know. I'm just amazed at that whole event. Like, is it bad writing? Or is it... Is the character meant to be stupid? Or I is, is that... Katie just not meant to stand up for herself? Is that is she meant to be like, oh, he got the opportunity to put me down and I'm just meant to go, oh, well done, husband, you put me down. <laughs> this is how I see it. Congratulations for <laughs> belittling me. I don't know, man. I don't know. This um, this is a bit weird. Yeah. I mean, she may have. There may have been a time where they thought elephants were in a movie. She just couldn't see them because they camouflage into the surface. Well, the moon's grey, and elephants grey. Yeah. So, you, I know you said that. She don't have to exist. But they actually would have camouflaged into the surface. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, however, there may have, there may have been a theory of the moon being an elephant based world. It was actually they they say it was made of trees, but it's actually one big elephant, and and if you if you cut it, you will get elephant meat. If you, if you eat the moon, <laughs> you're eating elephant meat. Okay, that's a bit too much, mate. If you, if you listen, too much, listen <laughs> in the dead of the night, sometimes you can hear the moon just trumpeting away. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy what you can hear when you've got headphones on, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so they fucking here's something weird. Okay, obviously, like in every like like um disaster event in any film. They always have to have someone doing something stupid, like in Prometheus, they never wear a helmet. And uh, in Lord of the Rings, they keep on throwing rings into rivers and shit, you know, stupid things. Uh, well, here they just keep leaving the doors open in the conservatory where they're building, where they're painting the thing. And so the, the paint dries quicker. And, and the scientist is constantly like, dude, what the fuck? I've been saying constantly. Don't keep the doors open. It's going to get fucking cold. Uh, we're going to have to leave in minutes. So she's like, um, all right, bye. If you change your mind, you don't want to go to the moon, you actually value our relationship. Come back home, darling. <laughs> 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 and he just stands there glumly like, oh, if you really do to go to the moon, but I want to continue my relationship that I have purposefully ruined so he was basically <laughs> choosing between a few minutes more of a relationship or going to the moon and he's standing there like oh it's a tough tough choice really tough mm. and then she goes back literally immediately there's a knock on the door she doesn't even sit down or anything uh guess who it is it's a fucking debt collector and he's like with a policeman fucking peeler they would have called them back then mm. and they were like yeah. you, owe, you owe rent you haven't given any rent so we can take you to court and she's like what me and he, and he's like who are you and she's like i'm the, the woman who lives here katie and well they're like yeah you you've signed your name on this paper so we can take you to court yeah she's like oh. yeah that's it's fuck and so she goes back to the ship and they were like ready to fly off. Like they were getting ready for it to dry. And she like knocks on the door and they think it's like the rumble of the thing taking off. But then she starts shouting, like, you get out here right now. And they're like, yo, if she doesn't move, she's gonna get absolutely decked by this thing as it flies up. <laughs> so she, he, she's like, she's like, get her in right now. And, and they just they don't even like, say anything, they just open up the hatch. Drag her in. <laughs> You're coming with us now. Yeah, and then like five seconds go by, and it's like nothing happens, and it's like you could have just told her to move. 
I mean, he might have got damaged by the glass, but <laughs> he would have been fine. And so... The sonic yeah, glass. That's the sonic it. Glass. He just gets in and it just takes off. And yeah, the conservatory explodes and the geese are like, whoa. And that's it. Also, okay, wait, I forgot. Now that I'm thinking about the geese, along with the shotgun, the shotgun was actually the weirdest thing. That's how much this has actually brought it. Uh, you, mi- you missed one key thing that you didn't tell me the reaction of. Bruce Forsyth, mate. Now, what was his reaction? He's dead, mate. But Bruce Forsyth died a few years ago. <laughs> I thought it was a goose in this form, he mate. Was a, no, mate. I was actually joking you. I was joking with you there. Oh, mate. Yeah, the geese I was, just, I was fully pre- all professional geese actors. Not men in suits. And not men <laughs> without suits. Sorry, that just kind of reminded me of Borat 2 with Johnny the Monkey, mate. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, they fucking... She brought chickens. She brought chickens with her. She's like, I've got a shotgun and chickens. And they're like, um... There's no elephants on the moon. And I don't think we need chickens on the moon either. And she's like... Yo, you eat your fucking bachelor beans without me then. You don't need my chickens. And and they're like, hold on, hold on. We'll have your chickens. So they put the chickens in the spaceship, which um probably not a wise decision, I'd say. No. So you know they just no. put her in like some airtight compartment. And there's just mm. chickens in the spaceship. So they're like in this fucking this is where the science really boggles the mind. <laughs> um, As if it hasn't already. Okay. So the thing is working with gravity. So they they leave Earth and they want to go to the moon. Uh, would you think that that would be hard? <laughs> the Earth has lots of gravity and the moon has very, very small gravity. Yeah. Very delicate and tiny and easily <laughs> broken. And Earth is big and bold and mighty. You know? Yeah. Uh, how the fuck are they going to do that? <laughs> if they turn on the just gravity, they're just going to get pulled back to Earth. Um, no, that's not how it would work. They would get fucked with, wouldn't they? They would just get they would. fucked with. Because see, the thing is, once they, once they basically leave Earth's atmosphere, and I've still got this anti gravity thing on, they yeah. should be flowing and it's flowing like, and no, flowing. They use the anti gravity to like guide themselves around, and they, they do like calculations to go to the moon. Like they turn off some flaps and turn on other flaps. But the Earth's gravity would still be stronger than the moon's gravity up until like a few. Hundred miles from the moon, in terms of like hundreds yeah. of thousands of miles. No, you wouldn't. You wouldn't have felt the gravitational pull of the Earth's gravity compared to the moon until you got close towards the moon. Yeah. Anyway, but even they, still, you'd still they, feel. They, yeah. They, yeah. One of them, tr- the girl, tries to look out the window, and so she lifts up the the like the flap, and obviously that fucks with that that takes away the anti gravity bit of that flap, and they immediately start going to the sun. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> and they're like, oh, what? Well, you fucked us, we're going to the sun now. And then it just immediately cuts to a scene of them, okay, I'm going to the moon. They didn't show them fixing it, didn't show them scared. They were. Fixed. Make sure you didn't just watch a, a bad version of the film. You know, I watched a fine version. I watched, I watched a, an impeccable version. It was better <laughs> quality than some of the actual films on Netflix in terms of, like, definition. <laughs> So, yeah, laugh all you want, mate. <laughs> it was, the book was written to be compatible with HD. 10, 1080p. Okay. Yeah. HD well beware. 4K, 4K, mate. 4K, 1880s. <laughs> yeah, mate. It's, it's not HD. It's HD well beware. Yeah, mate. <laughs> <laughs> they fucking, okay. Uh, so, they're like bored and um, the scientists are sleeping. And, um... For some reason, they're like the nearly broken up couple are like chill right now, and they're like, "Oh, I'm so bored and starving because all they've eaten so far was." I, I kid you not, it's a bit weird, but for their meal in space, they each had a single sardine—not that sardine anchovy, 
each of us in a single amphibia. One single amphibia. An amphibia is like it's like the size of like a small. little finger. They're very small. It's like that big, mate. Like what, like two inches, <laughs> uh, three inches, and it just uh, like peel uh, it off the plate. Uh, I mean, you would have a separate plate, which is kind of funny. <laughs> you have a separate plate with one tiny amphibia, and they eat it, and they're like, "Hmm, you could have fucking brought anything, couldn't you? You brought amphibians. Holy shit!" Uh, and so they're like. We could have chickens, and they're like, "Oh shit, yeah, you brought chickens." They go up to chickens, and he immediately wakes up. He's like, "Oh, like clucking," and they're like, "Yeah, I clucked." And then he starts doing some clucking, really low tier comedy here. And he's like, "I think there's some birds behind you." And he's like, "No, I, I, I definitely clucked. It was me clucking." <laughs> <laughs> and um, he parts them. He doesn't go around them. He like pushes them apart. Uh, it's kind of funny because up till now it was like a whole, a whole uh, part. So um, he sees the. It's a whole, it's a whole mouse's part in the sea kind of situation. Yeah, he splits them, splits them in twain, right? And um, there's chickens there, and the chickens immediately like are a bit like whoa. And he grabs, he takes this is super easy. He takes one out of the cage, and he's like, geez, I love ch chickens. Chickens I despise. And then he throws it. <laughs> he throws it. <laughs> and now you've just got feathers floating in space. Like, you okay. are fucking being weird, man. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> now they're like, yo, we're going to land on the, on the, on the, on the planet. Uh, or, or the satellite, the moon. And I was like expecting them to like slowly lift the flaps until there's no flaps open. That's what you would do, right? <laughs> they literally just turn them all off and <coughs> and they um they have these like um they're like tubes made of rope that they they like they go inside and hold on to and they like Caribbean are tied to the ceiling and the ground. And um uh the, the couple goes inside one and the old man goes inside the other. Because it was only planned for two of them to go, yeah. and um, they just fucking they hit the ground because it's a big ball. They just start tumbling over and over, and they would have fucking died. Like <laughs> it's now in hindsight that I'm thinking maybe the chickens were useful, a good idea. Yeah. But even so, if you're if two of you are inside one of those netty things, you would have like hit each other's like you would have got concussions from hitting each other's foreheads, right? Nasty. Probably, most likely, definitely. Imagine that you wake up and you've killed your partner, although you kind of just been nice. And it was yeah. like, why? Because because you went to the moon. Yeah, standard shit. Broke up with my bloke. Oh, what happened? I oh, went to the moon and I head butted him. <laughs> I don't think therapy existed back then, but if it did, Jesus Christ, it How wouldn't would you explain that? It's too rough. Yeah. Uh, so they fucking they're like we've only got two spacesuits. So they, they put on the spacesuits and they're like they go in that that like airproof bit with the chickens and she's like, cool, uh, fine. She doesn't complain at all that they're like we're gonna go on the moon. Okay, I'm gonna leave you behind. You know the bloke that got left in in the spaceship on the Apollo mission, the guy just looking mm -hmm. through the window. He was like, we can see the moon, but we can't Hi. touch it. <laughs> So mean, <laughs> but that was her. She's like looking through the tiny window as they're like jumping up and down, and um, okay. he obviously sticks in the flag now onto a rock that threw the um the letter from the queen. Mm. Which he got that he wrote that without her permission. He claimed the moon without her permission. It's a bit mean, to be honest. So that just doesn't make any sense. Yeah. It's just like, why are you lying for? <laughs> Yeah, he wasn't even like in the military or anything. I feel like if you're in the military, you could do that. But he just turned up with an elephant gun and said, "The shit's mine. Fuck off, you wispies." Oh, they hate the French back then, so it's mine. Really remember. But it's mine in the name of the queen. Yeah, he probably when he was younger, he probably did that in like Swaziland or something. <laughs> so he was 
pra- repractic yeah. colonial wings, you know. Anyway, they're jumping up and down, and they've got like weights around them to keep them down. Yeah. And <laughs> the scientist man takes his off, and jumps up really high, and lands on top of like two pillars of rocks and gets stuck between them. And he's like, "Hey, fuck! This guy's too much." And Bedford's like, "Yeah, you've had too much oxygen." And it's like, "Mate, he's just fucking up his nuts on oxygen. He's on. He popularized Knox before Knox was cool." <laughs> And so he like pulls him out of that thing of those two like pillars, and they walk like ten meters, and they see a big fuck off like hexagonal thing in the ground yeah. that's made of like glass, and they're like, that looks pretty weird. We should probably go look inside there. And so they're both on like a cord with their like cord connected to each other, yeah. tethered, you know, like a hot spot, and um. So one's at the top of the like the mound and the other one's <coughs> at the bottom and he starts falling in. And right, okay, let, let me say, okay. If you're on the moon, you weigh like what, like twenty percent, isn't it? You weigh like way less. So if, if I was tied to it's you basic. and you and I jumped off mm. a cliff on the moon, you would be like unaffected. It would be like like I would have weighed like shopping basket level weight, like so negligible. You would have just been able to pull me up easily without trying. But he falls into the hole and the weight causes him to fall in with him because he's connected. But it really would have just been he was dangling from him. Bit nitpicky. Yeah. But at the same time, that's that's a bit weird, but. If you're going to write a moon book in the 1880s, you better get that shit right. So they fall in. (laughs) And um, the helmet. I mean, come on. I, I'm pretty sure at that point they they understood this at this point. Like they understood how gravity worked. At that point, they must have, that I'm now. pretty sure they did. They're saying they know how gravity works now. Did you not listen to that whole painting gravi- anti gravity on their fucking windows? The, no, the bit that must have been a rough idea still. Oh, mate. When you say rough, you, you mean really <laughs> rough. Like fucking. Disheveled as fuck. <laughs> oh my god, man. Yeah, so he falls in and his helmet breaks or comes off. No, it just doesn't break, it just comes off for he literally screws no reason. On. It comes off for no reason. And he didn't even fall that just... far. It accidentally <laughs> spun three hundred and sixty degrees round. Without warning. Also, I forgot to say this, they're not wearing gloves. Their their hands are bare. What? Which okay, let I just my theory on that is that's so stupid that the people in the sixties must have decided on that because they would have been like, oh, lol, I bet they thought that you didn't need to wear gloves in space. Lol, how stupid! And they were like, let's just say that they didn't. And then they they would love. Yeah, the, the, moon, the, moon, the moon's nice and warm. Come live here. It's nice, toasty, twenty degrees, man. Yeah, because because they they were wearing like scuba diving kit, like um deep sea diving kit. And they, they wear gloves for that because of the pressure. And to keep air in. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a moment. Imagine that. Keeping air in in space? What? <laughs> no, there's air everywhere. Yeah, well, there is now because his yeah. head, helmet comes off and he can breathe. So it's like, whoa, crazy. He's, okay. breathing, he's breathing air. Okay. And so they walk down, they're like, let's get your helmet and fuck off, because we're in a tunnel with stairs, and that's not worth commenting on. <laughs> stairs are naturally occurring on the moon, you know that. Anyway, yeah. they, um, <laughs> they walk down the, the moon stairs, and uh, they they see some shadows of it, like through a tunnel, because they're in a tu- like a tunnel system. And they just stop, and they're like, okay, let's just get the helmet and get out of here. And they're like, yeah. And they're like, what? You're not going to make a noise and be like, howdy, partner. Let's, uh, you know, we're here to colonize you. <laughs> Praise the queen. Come <laughs> Hello. Yeah. You know, like in every horror film, when they see something weird going on, and in your mind you think, do I really want to investigate? Do I want to say something? Or do I want to get out of here and be like, mm, 
No, I want to say hello because they might say something back. Oh yeah, they did bring the, the gun either. Which is probably but a good thing elephants. because if he dropped his helmet that was screwed on, and also his friend, how the fuck is he gonna keep hold of a gun? So it's probably a good thing they didn't keep it. Anyway, they they go like um they go in, they find the helmet, and they're like, good, let's get out of here. And they turn around. And you hear this like really high pitch like squeaking. And there's just a really like I'm sorry to let you down here, but a bunch of children wearing Halloween fly costumes. <laughs> so you can see the the wings on the back are just like um <laughs> felt. They're just felt wings. And it, everything's just felt. And the wings are like glued on, like they they wouldn't be able to open or anything. And it's weird, when I saw this as a kid, I remember, I, I thought they were ants. <laughs> I had like, when I saw it, I was actually, I knew they were going to be like, I thought they were going to be ants, I was so ready. And when I see them, I'm like, that is some <laughs> low tier Halloween costume I've ever thought. Wait, is, can, is there a Google image? Is there, there must be. There must be. They, they, they just, they're literally like, you know in, in Charlie and Chocolate Factory, they've got like um, people with dwarfism to play the Impalumpas. They basically just did that with these are their children in fly costumes. They look really they climb. Cool. like it's just hilarious as well because they go up to them and they start like poking them with like their spears, but it's not yeah. doing anything to him. And um, so he just grabs his helmet and hits them all into like a ditch. And all of them. Oh my god, what is this? What are these eight? Oh, what? they're so terrible, aren't they? What on earth? Yeah. I mean, uh, this image kind of spoils it a little bit, but what <laughs> on earth? <laughs> that, I can't describe it any other way then. It's a fly costume that someone from Mum made for them. That's it. It's, it's nothing, nothing complicated about it. It's not like the thing where you can't fathom what this thing is made out of. It's just a fucking fly, but but made badly. <laughs> <laughs> it's not yeah. even, I don't know if it's meant to look different to earth flies, or they did such a bad job that it's meant to look like an earth fly. You know what I'm saying? Is it yeah. meant to look like an alien or like a fly? I, I actually I can't tell. It's meant to look like an alien, but I don't know. I don't really... I, I, I think they tried to make it look like a fly. You know, people knew what flies would look like back then. <laughs> you know, let's be real though. This is a hundred percent the fault of the people from the sixties. From the sixties, mate. They should have done better. Like, come on. Seriously? They could have done better. I know it was the sixties, but there were films that were out that did that should have done better. I'm not going to list. I have them. done better. I'm not going to list them because holy shit, uh, <laughs> they probably aren't. But at the same time, they shouldn't look that bad. Like, come on, holy fuck. Anyway, he's like he pushes loads of them into the ditch with his scuba diving helmet, and all of them that have spears do absolutely nothing. And the scientist is like, "No, no, we want to be peaceful with them. Why are you doing this?" And he's like. Fuck your peace, I'm a colonizer, bitch. And he drops his mic <laughs> and um, says, Gonna do this for Big Queen Vic. And then they run <laughs> off and they go back to the spaceship. And th on the way walking there, you can, you can visibly see a massive ditch of mud as if something's been like dragged forcibly along the ground for like many, many meters. And neither of them notice this. And they get to the exact site where it is. And they're like, spaceship's gone. <laughs> and like, I wonder where it could be. And it's like, come, come on, gang, let's figure it out wh where it's gone. It's like one of those, you know, games you play as a kid where you have to use, like, to look around the page to see the clues in the environment. And you can yeah. clearly just see, like, a fucking big ditch of mud that's been dug up, like a fucking World War One battlefield and they're like it might be those tracks over there and they're like ah oh, crazy idea 
who would have thought of that? And they followed them to a like a uh, like a twenty metre high by like a forty metre wide ball. It's pretty fucking huge. And you know what, you know what they do? They just force it open. <laughs> They just put their hands in, Courtesy, mate. and they open it's it up. Just knock, just just knock. That's like, they just they knock. knock in the Star Wars ring the doorbell. And go, I think you have to. I'm 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 here for the bounty, and they, the flies just open them up. <laughs> yeah, but they literally. Okay, it's also this is another really stupid moment. The door is kind of hard to open, so he takes off his helmet, and they jam it in the door. After the scientist has gone through, so he jams his he ja- the scientist jams his helmet in the door, and the bloke that's still outside, Bed Bedford, he starts going through, but his helmet is the same as the helmet that's holding the door open, so he clearly cannot get through with the helmet on, so he's his his like feet are in and his body's like out, and so he just pushes it down da- down like that. And the, the the helmet just drops through. Clearly, I don't know what they were thinking at all. Like, if you're wearing a helmet, you're not gonna be able to squeeze through that if the helmet's keeping it open. <laughs> I don't, is it the writers that are the problem there? I don't even fucking know. Like, who fuck came who came up with this? I think I think they just didn't use common sense in some of these situations. Yeah. Seeing as you could pry it open with your hands. <laughs> <laughs> Holy fuck, like, most people and struggle to open through the hands. door. And, and puts... <laughs> fuck. Oh. Anyway, classically, open it up in two tunnels, and they hear, the, they hear the shotgun go off, and they hear it going through one tunnel. So immediately, it's n- there's no value to the second tunnel. Absolutely. And they still split up and go in separate tunnels. Oh, okay. It's stupid, not that stupid, but... They didn't need to have the tunnel there. They could have just had one tunnel, heard the noise, and been like, we've got to get there quick. He's in danger. Didn't need for them to be like, oh, where do we go? Oh, let's think about where to go. And then they hear the gun. Just a waste of time. Really just unnecessary. Okay, they go through, and they see some like huge like like beetles, like wood lice or something. Like, the site... The size of like horses or something. Like pretty big. And they're like, oh, I'd hate to see like the dad or whatever. And then immediately the dad comes out. And it's like a big wood louse. Like oh, I don't Jesus know, like a hundred meters long, like ten meters wide. It's like jacked. And they start so hiding. A bit big. They start hiding and they get split up. And then the flies come and they get this like lasery thing. And they laser it, electric shock it. And it just kind of falls over and dies. Bedford's like still stuck in a crack in the wall and is watching them. And the, the flies pick off all the meat off of the off of it. And guess what? Guess what? Okay. Right. Not to boast, but for my zoology degree, I specialise <laughs> somewhat in in insects. Uh this fucking woodlouse had a skeleton. <laughs> <laughs> They picked they picked it, it it clean and you see the bones and it's just like a rib cage and a spine. I mean these things are because if it's got a rib if it's got a rib cage and a spine, it's clearly earth like because that's like quite a momentous thing to have a spine. But also it's it looks identical to an insect. You can see it's got insect like bones on its outside, and yet it's nothing like an insect. What? Oh. So the, my, this guy's this guy's got exoskeleton and a, an an actual in inside skeleton. It's got an inside skeleton and an yeah, outside and, skeleton. And skeleton yes. But you don't see the remains of the outside skeleton, even though you could visibly see it. So I just don't fucking get it at all. Anyway, Bedford fucking runs around. He's doing his kind of slaughter, hit and run type shit. So, yeah, sneaking around. Um, fucking the other two, Haiti and the scientist, they're now like together. They've been like imprisoned, 
and they've got like a different type of fly. It kind of looks like rum here. It looks a bit. It looks more disgusting, more like a potato head. It looks exactly <laughs> like Clarence from the Big Lebowski, just like weird, oh, like wrinkled potato with a long nose. I swear. Uh, and it's like communicating with them because all it's doing there's no nothing other than this because she's trapped in the prison she just says things like let me out let me out and it just repeats things he says not not like it just has speakers that repeat what she says it, the fly isn't doing it and then the scientist comes in and literally just opens up the prison and goes and encloses the prison <laughs> and <laughs> And then he says some stuff, and the fly res re responds back, but uses different grammar to him. And he's like, you know, it's crazy, you're using different grammar to him. It's like, how the fuck are you doing that? You, how are you actually working out grammar from, like, two sentences? Like, you're making up shit. It's like that weird scene in Limitless where, where he's like, I learned a language in 20 minutes. It's like, you can't. You can't. It's not possible. Like, machine learning can't do that. Yet, at least not yet. I mean, it's a bit much. A bit much. Like two or three sentences. No, maybe like a few pages of the book, maybe. But not on H.G. Wells' book because it's written like shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you heard me. It's a real flex on a dead man. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I remember watching. I sure don't really remember watching Young War of the Worlds. It's not very good. It's not I never, I don't, I didn't watch the original one. I watched like the two thousand three, two thousand four one, the remake of it. Oh, that's and even, even then, it's got Tom Cruise in. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was like, it's Tom Cruise, isn't it? And then I was like, it's yeah, not worth watching a Tom Cruise film these days, is it? <laughs> <laughs> but I just. I remember the tiniest fragments of the film because all I remember is the rest of the film being a bit boring and like I'm pretty sure some, most of the film was spent just hiding. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much hiding, running, hiding, running, hiding, running, yeah. and be it a weird UFO source of things with massive arms. Yeah, yeah, they're kind of funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now that 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 film's a piece of shit. <laughs> so much. The originals, the original films actually, I kind of liked the beginning. I mean, they made a whole opera on it, didn't they? I don't Haven't remember. They, they the whole opera. The ending. Do you remember the ending of War of the Worlds? I don't fully know. Holy shit! This bitch used the same ending for two <laughs> fucking books, and both films kept the ending. <laughs> It's a valueless oh ending, God. and it teaches nothing. This, this, it's they basically, um, you know, you know, in songs when you hear a, a, a song fade out, and it's like, oh, they didn't fade out; they kind of jog them through it. You're like, you just really don't know how to set how to end the song properly. He just fades out these the endings. It's the endings are just fade outs. <laughs> uh, uh, when when I tell you the ending at the end of this, you'll be like, okay, this piece of shit fade out. Awful. <laughs> Absolutely awful. <laughs> okay, okay, come on. Come on let's, 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 let's hear this. Okay, he's fucking... <laughs> the fly, like, like wanders around the base and is, like, going on some stuff. And you see the flies, like, breaking apart their spaceship. And it's like, ah, oh, it's a bit of a shame, but who cares? It's like, you should. That's your way home. Fucking hell. Okay. Um, and there's this whole, like, round table of the same, like, potato head flies. <laughs> And they like talk about some shit, and they're like, "Our chemists tried to try to recreate the anti gravity shit, but we couldn't do it. What is it?" And he's like, "Oh, it's made from helium." And it's again, it's like, "What? Holy fuck, mate! Whoa! Ah, oh, couldn't handle it." Anyway, he's like, "It's made from helium. I made it. Um, uh, that's it. That's all I'm gonna say." And they're like, "Yeah, cool. That was a good talk." Uh, fucking, and then he says goodbye to the rest of the potato head flies, and they go. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. There, there is a tiny, the tiniest bit of logic, considering helium is lighter than air, and helium does make you 
make things float, but... No, 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 no. Helium is lighter than the air in Earth's atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. Um, what value does that have in relation to anti Yeah, I know. Once we're in know, space, it just... it's, it's useless. The thing is, it makes sense for the escaping Earth part, like, maybe in the stupidest way. Yeah. Because obviously, theoretically, it doesn't work, but in a basic theory sense, it's like, helium float. They could have said, we're yeah. going to go into a hot air balloon, and then as when we get to the stars, we're going to swim to the, to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> now that makes more sense. <laughs> they're just gonna they're gonna have a car strapped to a hot air balloon and once the hot air balloon gets high enough they'll just drive to the moon whoa whoa why didn't i think about that <laughs> i'm pretty sure i'm i'm i'm, I'm 90 percent sure that's actually a film driving to the moon didn't elon musk did that as well yeah he did do that but i'm, I'm pretty sure in a film there was something that happened with a car and a balloon you know, like, okay, we're driving. Yeah, I that's... Just cruising through space. Man. I'm not going to lie, I made that shit up. Uh, sounds kind of better than the anti-gravity paint, but only because it sounds stupider as well. <laughs> Wait a second. They had a car at the beginning of the film. Why didn't they just fly... <laughs> If they just like um duct taped oh, no. the car oh, no. oh, to the no, no, to the no, big no, ball, no, 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 no. they could have just driven around when they got in there. They could have landed it on there and just driven around. Wait, you think you're too you think you're too much? Um he's a scientist, he should have been thinking like this. He didn't even need the car, he just needed wheels. But HG was like all all with wheels. <laughs> wheels oh. are bad for human. He was like, I can't see a future where wheels are practical. It's all about squares now, isn't it? Squares are great. <laughs> Trains with square wheels. Not wheels, squares. Squeals. Yeah. Squeals. <laughs> squeals being a big thing in the future. And everyone and else is like, what about you? flying cars? And he's like, no, no, flying cars are useless. Squeals are so, so fast. <laughs> Holy fuck, what a weird idea. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> it's just, it's just, I'm just picturing a car in my head with square <laughs> wheels and it's just like... Yeah. <laughs> it's oh just... shit. Again, Futurama got there first. Futurama have an episode where like, technology like turns against them and they're like, we have to start from square one. And he's like, I remember this thing called the wheel. And he's like, I'll build it. And he builds a wheel that's square. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh my god. Anyway, the fucking. Where did I get to? Oh, yeah. So once they're done analyzing his cavern light or whatever he called it, his anti gravity paint, mm. they just like go into cocoons and they're like, they just, they don't even ask him why they went into cocoons. They're just like, he just guesses. It's like, well, their job was done, so why not just hibernate? And it's like, when it makes sense in your head, it would probably even be quite quite nice to ask. You know, take an interest in someone else's culture. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I would have asked. Because you just saw... Yeah, like, maybe. If you saw a group of people just get tied up to the silk rope. I mean, that's quite a, quite a big thing. Big thing. And then he's yeah. like, oh, we probably shouldn't piss them off because they might do that to us. And then she says that to him. Again, she's the, she's the clever one in this film. Because she doesn't do anything, and so she doesn't do anything stupid, whereas the others do loads of stuff, and they do loads of stupid stuff. I think there's yeah. a relationship there. Enough, <laughs> yeah. So they fucking, they're wandering about now, and then suddenly, like, there's a lunar eclipse, and for whatever stupid bullshit reason, all the flies stop moving. And stop functioning completely. So now Bedford is just walking around freely. Like none of the flies are attacking him or anything. And um, 
he talks to Kate or whatever, something like that. And um, she just gives him the gun. Hope it's probably with a battery and a barrel deal. And I don't know. Bear in mind, she shot it once. She shot the gun once. Bear that in mind. So I'm going to do an art gun. I'm going to count the bullets of an elephant gun. <laughs> Completely double barreled. Uh, so one thing <coughs> down. Okay. He grabs it. He runs off because he stopped waking up again. And they, they, they have no memory of anything that went down. Just weird. Why Why is he just like hibernating for like 10 seconds? And, and scientists are like, oh, clearly they've just set aside the lunar eclipse to sleep. It's like, no, they wouldn't. What? Wouldn't they be just be like animals on our planet experience eclipses and just go, yo, this shit's weird and wild. What do I do? Am I meant to sleep or not? And then it goes back to normal. Whereas there, it's like they get no choice. They just turn off that Play shit. With it. Yeah. Also, a bit weird. You know, there was that like glass panel that I spoke about in the hole they fell through. Hexagon thing, yeah. Yeah, the weird hexagon pa- panel thing. Like light goes through that. And it's like this big rotating sphere, and apparently that provides infinite energy. And um, scientist calls it perpetual motion. Um, but it's actually just a solar panel. <laughs> maybe, maybe, oh maybe he is just stupid. Maybe he is just <laughs> stupid because it's clear that something's causing it to rotate. And. If it's not rotating on its own without any input of energy, then it it's just motion. Yeah. Uh, non-perpetual motion. <laughs> <laughs> Call me a scientist, but that's just my theory. That's my, that's my film theory. <laughs> 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 anyway, they fucking he like Holly. No, Kate just fucks around. I don't know what happens to her. Oh no, Bedford's like. Get in the spaceship, Holly. They start fixing it whilst they're all asleep or something. And um, he's like, yes, husband. He's like, still oh, so, so, no, so there she wants no to, questioning. Yeah. It's, ever since they went to space, their relationship blossomed for whatever reason. It's like Titanic. The honeymoon phase type thing, you know? Yeah. 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 Anyway, uh, they try and leave and the panel doesn't go down. And so he he goes to look for the scientist. Turns out the scientist is talking to the big dick fly, and he's behind like like a a green panel. You know, in um in Alice in Wonderland, when they're talking to the is he called the scientist as well? Yeah. In Alice in Wonderland. He's yeah he's in like a hologram. Not Alice in Wonderland. Dorothy. It's Dorothy. Dorothy one. Who's the boss? Wizard of Oz, yeah, it's kind of got that vibe, but you can actually just, it's just a, like a plastic cane, and then the like the big king guy, and he's like, tell me about Earth, and he's just, he sits down, he's like, oh, that's pretty hot, uh, you know, we're chill, and he's like, are you reunified, and he's like, oh, fuck, no, but me and the British, we, we, we try to get around to doing that, we're, we're, a, qu- we're a quarter done. So we're almost there. Um, <laughs> fucking. So, yeah, but, you know, man can be bad. We can have, you know, fights and war. And it's like, tell me more about war, please. And it's like, well, it usually starts with a bang. What? It usually starts with a, a bang. What the fuck is he on about? To be fair, <laughs> World War One did start with a gun foot, didn't it? A big mm-hmm. bang. Insane, yeah, it was right? um, the assassination of Fran- was it France? No. Francis. Francis died. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's something for it's. Is it, no, it's not. It's, not, it's someone. Franz Ferdinand. Ferdinand. Yeah. Yes, it, isn't that the name of that brand or something? Or is that different? Wait, Franz, Franz Ferdinand. Ferdinand famously died. If you're not, if you're not remembering this correctly, I don't think he'd be in the 1990s top top down. He could be. Yeah, I'm just... Maybe he faked his death. Imagine that. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I can't remember. I know it's... I think it is Franz Ferdinand, isn't it? It is. It is. Anyway, my point is... <laughs> I'm um, sorry. The wars the British were fighting usually started with 
we want what, what you've got and we don't like you because you're a different ethnicity. So um, we want to take it by destroying you. Yeah, that's pretty and much. If you can't destroy you, we colonize you. Yeah, their their wars generally started with no fighting and ended with lots of uh, cold blooded killing. Not really a didn't really start with a bang, I'd say. Anyway, yeah. uh he starts teaching an alien race about how humanity is evil and warlike. What an idiot. Holy shit. So the the aliens are like Bedford starts like creeping up on this conversation and hears it. And um the aliens are like, Yeah, we we kinda not let you go then. We we're gonna bring back loads of warlike people. And Bedford like jumps up and and's like, No, you must get out of here, he drags the scientist and all the five start rumbling around and Again, not really doing anything, but they've got spears that don't do anything. Fuck knows what's going on. Mm. He gets his elephant gun, shoots it at the screen with the king, bounces off and does nothing. So, two shots down. Uh, well, should have no bullets left. He just, he then shoots at the skylight where like all the light comes through and everything turns off. But this time, all the flies are still like awake, like the lights went off, but they're all good. And so they run out, uh, and he's like, I don't want to leave, I need to stay here and educate them and learn. And it's like, lol, mate, the panel's broken. And the scientist is like, oh, the panel's broken, fuck. And he's like, to be fair, I agree with him. If the panel's broken, <laughs> just give it a wig and get a duster, clean it up, come on, Jesus Christ. It's not a complicated thing, the panel's broken. It should just go up and down if it doesn't pull it, fuck. Anyway, mm. considering this ball has been uh, underground and dragged underground. It's conveniently located under where they first fell in through the big tunnel. So they're like, we're going to leave. Okay. Scientists, are like, scientists are like, I'm going to stay. And they're like, fuck it, fine. So thanks for fixing the panel. They just turn on all the vents and it just goes straight up. And it's so convenient that it's underneath the skylight. They get back to Earth. Apparently the craft van in Zan which is Zanzibar, the thing that has anti gravity capabilities <laughs> of course vanishes. It's so apparently. What? Even though they landed it. I don't what? Oh. Stupid as fuck. Anyway, you're back in like the hospice where he's talking to the press and now they're like playing on the T V like them going into the yeah. flies nest and you just see like nothing and civilization collapsing and everyone's dead and um and then it's like oh this this caving in like a minus tunnel that was what it said it was a bit weird <laughs> anyway <laughs> the, the the one guy that had been there isn't watching the tv he just goes up to the telescope looks up at the moon and just says Oh, my dear scientist, he always did have a nasty cold. And the film ends. Do you like that fade out? The, oh, it turned out they were, like, exposed to the cold and they died. What a piece can you of... Just, can you just repeat, like, shit. the last few bits of what you just said. It turns out like... that the UN's scientists, people in space, the cosmonauts, went into the tunnels, saw that everything was dead and civilization had collapsed, and then the bloke who was there, Bedford, he goes up to the telescope, looks through it at the moon, and just said, oh mate, you always did have a terrible cold. So he took the cold, the common cold, and the common cold killed them all. Although, my personal theory, he taught them about war. In teaching them about war, they <laughs> killed each other. But I think it's trying to tell you that they died from the cold. It's stupid. I think it's basically an insinuation that the war, the idea of war was a disease, and we spread it to them. No, H.G. Wells isn't a clever person. He actually okay, yeah, so <laughs> That they are these different species from a different planet 
we're able to die from our illnesses. <laughs> what a twat. Why would he write that shit? <laughs> Seriously. Anyway, in, in, in War of the Worlds, its ending is the same. It's the aliens can't breathe oxygen. They find oxygen poisonous. <laughs> they don't just sit in the robots the entire time or something. Wait, don't what? they just stay in the robots the entire time? Yeah, but still, I for some reason they die from our oxygen. They couldn't breathe our air. They, our air was poisonous. That's the end of the film. They just crash or something and burn. And you got the same ending. They just died from being exposed to Earth. Like oh my god. What the hell? <laughs> and the abuse of power. That, that ending is so bad. He does have a way with words. He did. In not the greatest of ways. Yeah, no, no, terrible, terrible ways. <laughs> it's like when he wants to explain something more, but when he wants to finish a book, he died of the common cold. But his books were long, like. <laughs> so it was like you'd get to the end of the book and be like, oh, what, ha what happened? Oh, they died for no reason? Like, I mean, to be fair, when the British went over to America, uh, they all died <laughs> from, like, syphilis or whatever. So, I mean, I get where he's coming from. So now's my, my question. Did the scientist have sex with the fly and give him syphilis? I mean, he was gone for a bit of time. And did, he did, did want did he to have stay in. Fly sex and and give syphilis. <laughs> did, did he? <laughs> did, he get a, is... did he get a fly wife? <laughs> fly wife. <laughs> <laughs> fly wife. <laughs> that was a terrible joke. Yeah, but yeah that's but... my that's my theory. He gave them the concept of war, which killed most of them, and then mm. the ones that were that stayed alive, he married. Systematically to kill them. <laughs> he systematically married them in order to kill them with syphilis. <laughs> HG Wells was above his time. He never people never interpreted it that way. That was the that was the intended meaning of the film of the book. <laughs> <laughs> syphilis. Yeah. The intended meaning of is that Look, flies get syphilis too? Is that marriage is a weapon? Don't get married. And um, don't teach flies to have war. Also, if you're going to space, take extra spacesuits. That is a really great idea. Really great. Because if, if they all went, went in there, in their spacesuits, it probably would have gone better. They probably wouldn't have fallen in the hole, wouldn't have lost the helmet, and wouldn't have had to go, go in the hole and grab the helmet and physically fight a bunch of child flies. <laughs> but from what you get, they didn't even need the helmets in the first place because the moon has oxygen. Moon no, the, has the, moon, the moon didn't, but the tunnels did. But there was like no, there was no like quarantine, so everything was open to the elements. So oxygen could escape. Yeah. Also, I think I remember a part where you saw, it had like a bubbly thing where you saw them making air. So we're actively making air, which begs the question, what did they do before they had machines? They just... So technically, the flies were the colonizers. Yeah. Also, this is my favorite part of the film. What in God's name is the value of <laughs> wings in a planet with no or little air? It's like having a fucking jet plane and only using it fucking in space. It's not going to work. It needs air. It needs to push down on air. Yeah. It's like it's like a fan. 
what they're going to, if you crack out, out of Chinese spam on there, it'd be like, is it working? Why is it not working? To take a helicopter into space, mate. <laughs> that was like, you just tie it's a helicopter to a hot air balloon with a DeLorean. <laughs> Sorry, <it>, mate. Sorry, <laughs> mate. <laughs> mate, DeLorean's all rubbish, man. A DeLorean would have worked better. Probably, Probably would. Maybe. I mean, it runs on polonium. I don't know if it flies at any of that. Maybe. They didn't have any Haverite, I think it was. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, oh yeah, it's Haverite, but really it's just helium. It's made of like, it's a metal helium. It's, it's a metal that they basically wanted the idea of what if you could make a liquid form of helium and then paint it on stuff. I would use it yeah, for weird no, things. No. I would be like that um, wouldn't work. I, I would um put tiny amounts of it on, on weird stuff like like coasters. Like you lift your cup off the off the table and your coaster slightly lifts up and it's just like, why is that happening? Like I just annoy <laughs> people with it. <laughs> you know I've got the best idea. The chairs at the cinema, I paint the chairs at the cinema with it, so when you when you push it down to sit on it, it'll just fling back up. <laughs> if you sit down in them, it'll just like crunch you in because it's trying to raise up. <laughs> don't, don't they do that anyway? Yeah, they do, but like slightly. I'm talking like an aggressive amount. Like you, you can't Jesus force Christ. it down, and if you do, it's just going to lift your ass up. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. This is a very. Yeah. You know when you watch, you watch a film and you get to the ending, you're like, "What's the point of this film?" Oh, it's a bullshit ending. It feels it. Like, feels like one of those kind of films. For me, this was a scientific endeavor to watch this film. My generation <laughs> is watching a film that the boomers made in the sixties. These are post-war people. They still remember, like, fucking Hitler and shit on the radio. And they made a film that someone wrote a book about in Queen Victoria's time. <laughs> this is, like, like two, three layers of, like, laughing at stupid shit. This guy that wrote the book, what a pompous, arrogant prick. The people that, that made the fucking film thought they were going to take the piss. They didn't do it. They just ended up making it stupider, weirdly. I don't even know if they added weird jokes about it, being old. And if they, I feel like they needed to adapt it in some kind of way to have a bit of common sense. I feel like they, they were just... just chose too, to like me. They must have been too lazy. They were like, oh, what's an insect look like under the skin? I put probably like a bony thing. Oh, fuck it, just give it bones. I'm not sure. I did weird when I was looking at it. When I was looking at images of the aliens, it did turn out that I think there may have been another version of this film before this in black and white. I don't think it was. There was um, there was a 1916. Is, is that the one where it's like two minutes long, and it's just a bit like oh, I think it's a bit of a Jules Verne book. About it or something. I don't remember. I don't think another film was made. I think they made it. Black and white. Black and white silent film. I'm not watching. So the, the only silent film I watch is Nosferatu or whatever. <laughs> I will get around to it within the year, alright? But I can't <laughs> promise anything. It, it doesn't say much about. Well, it doesn't say much about it. Ugh. Yeah, it's um, not a, yeah, I wouldn't okay. recommend it. I would actually recommend this film. Sim simply because. Because I would when I watched it when oh, I was. Actually, yeah, first man in the moon, nineteen nineteen. It's. Yeah. When I watched this film when I was a kid, loved it, and I knew it was stupid because I was watching it. I. Every, even back then, I was like, this is so stupid. But I was like, 
I think I thought it was like um, taking the piss with me. But now watching it back, I don't think they did mean to take the piss as much as they did. I think they took ideas like like space insects and anti-gravity paint and just kind of built some structure around that. But they, I think they but really none. did. I think they really did a lot of stupid things as well. And I really hope, I pray to God that I ridiculed people today. I ridiculed people who made poor decisions because that's part of learning is to be laughed at. It's an essential part of learning. Having said that, all the people that made this film are probably dead. People that fucking, the actors are probably gone. Maybe, yeah. To be fair, that silver paint probably wasn't very good for him. And he's probably dead because of that now. Anyway, I'd recommend that fucking that film. It's just fucking funny. <laughs> 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 it's just fucking funny. <laughs>